can do a little bit better than that. Praise the Lord, everyone. Hallelujah. Welcome to New Direction Church. You're in the right place at the right time. This is the place where we lead people to a better life. And on behalf of our pastor, Dr. Kenneth Sutherland Jr., and all of the New Direction family, we welcome you to be a part of our worship celebration. I'm just glad to be a part of the house tonight. Come on, make some noise. If you're just grateful for all that the Lord continue to do in our lives, he is a way maker. I'm going to ask you, if you're in the room, just to rise to your feet. We're going to go to the Lord together in prayer to welcome him in this place. He's been a part of our day, but we want to dedicate these moments in time specifically for the Lord. Amen. So I ask you just to pray with me. Father in heaven, we love you. We thank you. We bless you. We're humbled and honored at all the things you continue to do in our lives. God, in no way do we deserve to know who you are. We are unworthy, but somehow, out of all the people in the world, you called us out of darkness into your marvelous light. God, and for that and so much more, we come to say thank you on tonight. God, we are believers, and you said anybody that come to you may, must believe that you are. God, and we believe that you are strong. We believe that you are mighty. We believe that you are our redeemer. You are our way maker. You are our savior. All that we need, we already have in Jesus the Christ, Son of the living God. And we humbly come before you on tonight, God. God, bowing before your greatness, your wonder, your splendor, your majesty, all of the things that you're so worthy of. God, we give you all the praise and all the glory and all of the honor. God, you are so great in our lives, God. We don't deserve all the things that you do, God, but you continue to bless us, God. Every time we turn around, you continue to bless us and keep us, God, and strengthen us, God, and protect our families, God. We thank you, God, because you don't have to do it, but you do it anyway, God. We thank you on tonight, God, and we pray that during these moments, God, that you have first place. God, that you remove all the distractions and interruptions from our day, God, so that we can make you first during this time, God. First to get our praise, first to get our attention, first to get our worship, first to get our love on tonight. God, we pray for the great pastor of this great church, God. Feed him even right now. Pour into him all that he needs in this season as he lead leaders and teach teachers and minister to the members of this church and beyond. God, and I pray right now, God, that everyone that's in this room and those that's watching the worship celebration, that you you meet them at their point of need. You promise to supply all of our needs according to your riches and glory. God, that means you have no limits. You can perform miracles. That means you have no limits. God, that you can open doors. That means you have no limits. That you can move mountains. You have no limits. God, you can heal bodies and change minds. God, you can do anything and everything. So we want to give you a sacrifice of praise on tonight. We want to bring you our praise on tonight just to show how much you are worth to us God we don't deserve you God but we are grateful and thankful of today that you find us worthy of your presence worthy of your grace worthy of your goodness worthy of your mercy God we don't deserve it but because that's how you are God you are God that is kind that is loving God and we're here to give you all the glory that you are due so start right now let the hallelujahs begin even right now bring to our remembrance the reason why we're standing here on today that is only because of your grace and your mercy god that we are able to come into this house to lift our hands and our hearts and our voices we're here for you on today and we thank you for the opportunity god to lift up holy hands and give you the praise if you believe that today say in jesus name amen put those hands together for jesus Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. How many know that God reigns? He Woo! reigns over every situation, every circumstance. Hallelujah. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. Hallelujah. You're a great God. Oh, yeah. Say, my God reigns. My God reigns. Our God reigns. Our God reigns. Come on, Lord. Lord, you reign above every name. Oh, I said, my God reigns. My God reigns. Oh, oh. our God reigns. Lord, Lord, you reign above every name. Come on, let's say it again. My God reigns. My God reigns. Our God reigns. Our God Lord, reigns. You reign. Lord, you reign. Above every day. Come on, that's a declaration. Come on, my God reigns. My God reigns. Our God reigns. Our God reigns. Lord, you reign. Lord, you reign. Yes. Above every day. Oh, with power and majesty. With power and majesty. Dominion. Dominion authority. You reign. You reign. Oh, with power and majesty. With power and majesty. Dominion. Dominion. 
Come on, let's say it again right there. Oh, oh, I said, my God reigns. My God reigns. Our God reigns. Our God reigns. Lord, you reign. Lord, you reign. Above. Above every day. Oh, oh my God reigns. My God reigns. Our God reigns. Our God reigns. Lord, Lord, you reign. Above every day. Oh, I said, my God reigns. My God reigns. Our God Dominion. Dominion authority, come on, everybody say you reign. Oh, come on with power and majesty. With power and majesty. Dominion. Dominion authority, you reign. You reign. Oh, come on, let's take it up. Oh, everybody say, my God reigns. My God reigns. Come on, our God reigns. Our God reigns. Lord, you reign. Lord, you reign. Above. Above every day. Oh, say, my God the victory tonight oh You're mighty. You're mighty. You're mighty. You're mighty. You're mighty. 
Are you mighty? You are mighty God. Are you mighty? Are you mighty? You say mighty are the works of your hands. Mighty are the works of your hands. Mighty are the works of your hands. You are faithful. You are faithful. He's a faithful God. You're faithful. You're faithful. You're faithful. You're faithful and consistent God. Say mighty are the works of your hands. The works of your hands. Mighty are the works of your hands. How great! Come on, let's say it. Is our God. How great! Sing with me. How great! Our God. Is our God. Oh. Oh, see how great! How great! How great! Our God. Is our God. We serve a mighty God tonight. Anybody know it? Anybody believe it? How great! How great! Is our God. Is our God. Oh. oh. One congregation, everybody say, How, how great! Come on, let heaven hear It's our God. Oh. Sing with me, how great! Oh. It's our God. Oh, oh we'll see how great! How great! How Come great. on, let's all right to worship Him as our God. It's our God. Hallelujah! Come on, let God hear you tonight one more time. How great! Yeah. How great! Oh. It's our God. How great is he? Come on, how great is he? Express it with your hands. How great is he? Come on, I gotta see everybody hands tapping, foot stomping, voices raised in this place because we know that we serve a great God at New Direction Church. We witness his presence every time we step into the building. God is a great God. Hallelujah. Come on, y'all ready to go to church a little bit this morning? I said this morning, but it's this evening. Amen. Y'all ready to go to church a little bit this evening? Come on. Yeah, yeah. Tell somebody, there's nobody like my God. Come on, yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, put your hands on it. Yeah. Nobody, nobody. There's nobody like him. Hey, 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 hey. There's nobody like him. Hey, say, oh, Lord. 
somebody like my Jesus. Come on. Sometimes you just got to join in. Join in in a praise. Hallelujah. Come on, lift your hands. Give God praise one more time. Yeah. Long as I bring up my pastor, our pastor, the angel of this house, Dr. Kenneth Sullivan Jr. Hallelujah. Come on, give it up for this incredible music department on tonight. If you know there's nobody like our God, my God, your God, come on one more time. Put your hands together and give our God a great big hand. And give it up for this incredible music department on tonight. How many of y'all are happy we have sunshine? Can we just bask in that for a moment? Just celebrate. Come on, I know it's a whole lot of stuff you can complain about and say it's not happening. Just give it up for the sunshine on tonight. I am so happy to be here on tonight. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Listen, we got guests who are near, who are far, online, on the ground, and I want you to hear it again. I know you've been greeted, but I want to greet you again and tell you we're so happy to have you in our midst and as our guests. New Direction Church, can y'all make some noise for our guests? Come on. Listen, now, I don't just want you to celebrate them. I want you to show it. So I'm going to ask everybody. Somebody say everybody. So say full participation. Introverts and all. I want everybody to go find somebody, speak to them, shake their hand, tell them hello. I'm happy to see you. I'm glad you're here. I'm here. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody, 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 no, 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 nobody, 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 nobody can say. Nobody can heal. Nobody, Nobody delivers Nobody. like you got. Nobody. 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 I almost had a flashback. Almost had a flashback. I got to sing and nobody. And I heard keep sweat in the back of my ear. And who can love you like me? Nobody. He's still working on me. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise on the day. All right, listen, I'm really excited. God is doing some phenomenal stuff. And it's good to be alive and good to be in the midst of what the Lord is doing in the earth. Every day that God gives us, it is a blessing. And I, I want to say this even before we worship God and giving. I want us to make a commitment. I want you to do this, please, to be positive. Somebody say, I'm making a commitment to be positive. I don't care what the situation is. Mother, I'm going to be positive. I'm going to respond the right way. Amen. I'm not going to be negative in what I say, what I put in the atmosphere, what I post, what I text, who I send a message to. I'm going to be positive. 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 And I think that's very, very simple for us to do, but it's um, something we have to make a conscious decision to do and just say, you know, I, I do want to say this and I want to get to this. You don't just need to read the word. You need to speak the word. God told Joshua, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, because I think if we just get the word in us, it's kind of hard for us 
you know, not, not to, you know, have it in us. So we have to speak it. We have to make declarations. And every day you get up, you have to make a declaration of faith and say, this is going to be a great day. I'm looking for good news. I'm looking for things that go positive. I'm going to get the right parking spot I need to pull into. I'm not, hey amen, I'm going to get to work on time. I'm going to have good, a good atmosphere. And I am going to be the one who determines that that happens. Right? I'm not going to let anybody else dictate how things go for me. I'm taking control. Somebody make some noise on the day. It's a lot of negative stuff. I don't even want to hear it. I'm not going to deal with it. I'm going to set my affections on things above, not things below. And I'm going to be positive. Amen? And we got to make that decision. So listen, um, this is a chance for all of us. Let the church say all. This is a chance for all of us to get ready to worship God in giving. Do me a favor, lift up your gifts, your tithes, and offerings. And I want us to lift them up. I want us to, as we get ready to sow, because I really believe this, and I've been praying. We was on our prayer call earlier. I'm praying that God is going to make the people of this church the head and not the tail. God is going to give you favor on your job, in your career, in your business, what you oversee. I believe God wants his people, if we're the salt of the earth and we're going to make influence and we're going to have impact, I believe God is going to give you influence. Now, can I, can I insert this before we pray? To whom much is given, much is required. God is going to elevate some of y'all, and I don't want you to get the big head. I don't want you to abuse your power and authority. You can't be small and petty because when God makes you bigger, you got to be the bigger person. Are y'all hearing me on today? Right? Because if you can't be the bigger person inwardly, God can't put you over stuff. <laughs> You're going to have to go the extra mile. You're going to have to take some stuff on the chin, deal with insults and all that, and still say, you know what? It comes with the territory. Right? Lift that up right where you are. I want to pray over us. God, even now, bless your people. On this day that we fast, on this day that we pray, on this day that we worship, on this day that we give, on this day that we sing. We honor you not just in song, but with our substance. We give to you, and we recognize our giving is not in vain. Our living is not in vain. Our prayers are not in vain. Our faith is not in vain. Up the road is eternal gain. But even before we get to eternal gain, God, we know there's an assignment you have for us in the earth. So bless us, equip us, sharpen us, hone us. Help us to be in tune with your will, your word, and your way. And God, as we give, we ask that you would give back to us. Help us to prove to be good stewards who can be faithful over a few things and that you'll entrust us with more. So bless your people. Bless the works of their hands. Bless their minds. Let them be uh, creative and, and ingenuitive, Lord. Help them to be effective at what they do. God bless us as we honor you now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want to do something different on tonight. I have some questions uh, from Sunday's message, but I, I, I went back to my, my uh, office after our men's meeting. Ladies, did y'all have a good time in gathering on tonight? Oh, I love the energy. I love the energy. And after our men's fellowship, um, I want you to go with me to Galatians. Go with me to Galatians chapter 2. Galatians chapter 2. I'm going to look at verses 11 through 14. And um, this is a message hot off the press, um, hot off the press. I've talked from this before about pride and prejudice, and, uh, but I want to teach, teach something different because it deals with Peter. And we had this conversation. If I can get a little bit more on my monitors. We had this conversation. Verse 11 through 14 is where I want to turn our attention. When you have arrived, please say amen. God bless us even now. Breathe on your word. Speak to the hearts and minds of your hearers, of your people as we stand here. Change us. We know there's things, God, that you want to correct about us. You want to adjust in us, God, so do it even now as we gather in this place to hear your word. And those who are online, speak to us, speak through me to the hearts and minds of your hearers that we might change for the better. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Galatians chapter 2, I want to read verses 11 through 14. Here's what it says. Now when Peter had come to Antioch, I withstood him to his face because he was to be blamed. For before certain men came from James, he would eat with the Gentiles. But when they came, he withdrew and separated himself, fearing those who were of the circumcision. That means the Jews. And the rest of the Jews also played the hypocrite. 
with him so that even Barnabas was carried away with their hypocrisy. But when I saw that they were not straightforward about the truth of the gospel, I said to Peter before them all, if you being a Jew live in a manner of Gentiles and not as the Jews, why do you compel Gentiles to live as Jews? We who are Jews by nature and not sinners of the Gentiles, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by faith in Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by faith in Christ and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law, no flesh shall be justified. But if while we seek to be justified by Christ, we ourselves also are found sinners, is Christ therefore a minister of sin? Certainly not. For if I build again those things which I destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. For I through the law died to the law that I might live to God. I've been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not set aside the grace of God. For if by righteousness comes through the law, then Christ died in vain. Today I want to talk about he's still working on me. He's still working on me. Look at your neighbor and tell him, neighbor, neighbor please, please be patient with me. Patient. He's still working on me. Working. Amen. Amen. I love this because when we talk about Peter and how he recovered from his fall, Sunday we looked at how Peter, who had been following Jesus, denied him when Jesus was taken to the cross. And then Jesus goes back to get him in the Gospel of John. We see this discourse and discussion. Jesus goes to Peter, who had gone back to his former lifestyle of fishing, and he says, Peter, do you love me more than these? He says, Peter, I see you as being too important for you to stay where you are. So Jesus goes back and gets Peter. He reestablishes Peter, and Peter goes on to head the church in Jerusalem. It is at the church in Jerusalem, Peter preaches, 3,000 souls come to Christ. It is there that the Jerusalem council would begin to lay out the doctrinal truths and what was acceptable and unacceptable with the church. This church, this new group of believers who are now being primarily comprised of Jewish believers now have to accept Gentiles being brought into the fold. So though Peter had been changed and he had been reestablished, God was still working on him in the area of his prejudice and his pride. Because Paul, who is now the apostle, who goes in Acts chapter 9, he has an encounter with Christ, he's saved. God calls him to go to the Gentiles. So now the church is beginning to change. The demographics are beginning to change. Paul is starting to go to areas where the gospel had not been preached. He's speaking to Gentiles. He goes to Mars Hill. He goes to Galatia. He goes to Ephesus. He goes to Corinth. He goes to these Gentile Greek cities. And he's seen people get saved by the droves. These are outposts while Peter is still in Jerusalem at the church. And so you see these exchanges as to whether or not this conversation, Gentiles now should be circumcised. Should they be circumcised or should we accept them into the fold? And then Paul and the apostles and the other believers have to come up with this understanding that as long as they accept Jesus Christ into their life, they're filled with the Holy Spirit. They no longer now have to be circumcised because they're not Jews. In fact, Paul deals with this all in the book of Galatia. He calls them mutilators. He says, I don't want you all drifting back to that old Judaism that you were born again out of. I want you to understand that you now have Jesus Christ and he is working on you, working in you, and he's working in the lives of other believers. Please don't miss this. Now what he has to deal with is this whole issue of how do we accept them in equally as we're dealing with diversity. Don't miss this. So now you have, he is literally gone, Peter, to this group of Jewish believers who now have Gentiles in and among them, and watch what happens. While he is with this group of Gentile believers, all is well. Then the Jewish brethren showed up. Now he distanced himself from those who are Gentiles because the Jewish brothers come in and he doesn't want it to appear that he's down with the Gentiles like that. Did you miss what I said? 
He says, yeah, we cool and all, but I ain't really with them like that. Have you ever had somebody distance themselves from you a little bit? I don't really know you like that. We ain't cool like that. That's what happened. Three points I want you to write down. The first thing I want us to see is the contradiction. I'm going to give you the whole outline up front. We see the contradiction. We see the confrontation. Then we see the correction. The first thing I want you to see is the contradiction. Watch what Paul says. He says, Peter, you are playing a hypocrite because these Gentile believers are coming into the church expecting to get something different in the church than they get in the world. And if you are a leader in the church, you should be welcoming of these Gentiles, embracing them, not distancing yourself from them, and not still dealing with this issue of pride and prejudice. God has been breaking Peter down because you'll discover early on in the book of Acts, here's what happens. While Paul is now, or Peter is now ministering, God speaks to him and says, Peter, I want you to go to Cornelius' house. I know he's a Gentile. I know he doesn't necessarily eat the same type of food you eat. You all are kosher, but I want you to go to his house and have a meal with him. I want you to go there, and he says, never, Lord, because I'm kosher. He says, Peter, I want you to go to his house. I want you to get over your pride. I want you to get over your prejudice, and he goes and has a meal. Don't miss this. He does that, but he's still not over some of the stuff that's laying dormant inside of him in terms of pride and prejudice. And I don't just want to deal with pride and prejudice, but I want to deal with what maybe you are dealing with inside of you. That even though you are committed to Christ, you're a follower of Christ, you are a disciple, you're still dealing with some inconsistencies, you're still dealing with some contradictions, you're still dealing with some stuff. And though you're saved, God is still sanctifying you. Y'all, this is why this is so important because what can happen is we can start dealing with some struggles. We can fall, we can slip, and then we can conclude that our salvation is not real. Yeah, you saved, but there's still a struggle. The struggle is real. Look at somebody tell them the struggle is real. I'm saved, but there's still some stuff I'm struggling with. I'm saved, but there's still some stuff I'm wrestling with. And your stuff may not be my stuff, but we all got stuff. So watch what he says. Go to Cornelius' house. I want you to eat with him. I don't want you to stay the same. I want you to overcome this pride and prejudice, but it's still in him. And it shows up in Galatians chapter 2. And it shows up, and he's probably not even fully aware, watch the word, of his own hypocrisy. That's why I got to bring up the second point, correction. You need people around you who will help correct you and show you stuff about yourself that you need to correct and change. In fact, you need to sit up under the word because the word is a mirror. It shows you yourself. It shows you your flaws, your faults, your issues, your hangups. That's why you need to run so you can get up under the word because I got some blind spots. There's some stuff I can't see about myself. Sometimes I'm tempted to think everything is together until the word cuts me right down the middle and shows me my struggle. That's why when you come to church, it ain't all about you shouting. Sometimes it's about God fixing stuff on you. If you're not careful, you will only look to hear and be reaffirmed with what you want to hear. But sometimes you need to hear what you don't want to hear. You need to hear that there's still some areas God's trying to change. You need to hear some subject matters dealing with what you're dealing with so that you can then go before God and say, God, straighten me out. God, fix me. God, iron this stuff out. God, take the stuff out of me that I'm battling with and I'm struggling with. Matter of fact, I thank you that you exposed it to me so that you could deal with that thing in me so that it would not begin to grow. But God, now you can address it. Now you can fix it. Now you can remove it. So watch what Paul does. I love this because Paul tells Peter, you wrong. See, that, that's a challenge in our culture nowadays. People, people don't want to hear you wrong. We want people who reaffirm, who co-sign, who agree with, who go along with. Watch this. And if you don't, you a hater. We resist it. 
And so what we have to learn how to do is we have to receive, second point, correction well. The Bible says a fool hates correction. Right? It, they don't want to be corrected. They don't want to be changed. They don't want to hear uh, about the stuff that needs to be fixed in their life. No, but a wise man receives correction. Can I add a caveat to this for y'all? Um, I want you, even with your critics, even with your critics, dissect what they're saying. And did you hear this? Because it may be some truth in some of what they're saying. And sometimes God can use your critics to help correct you. Are you hearing me on today? But it's hard to receive correction from every and anybody. Let me give this to you real quick. Um, there's some people you don't need to listen to. I'm just giving you constructive criticism. You've never constructed anything. <laughs> you got to have some credibility to correct me. Right? You, what, what, well, okay, what have you done? What, what establishes you to be able to coach me or tell me about the lane I'm in. Is this making sense? But you have to be open to receiving correction. And watch what happens. Paul says, I withstood him openly to the face. In other words, I called him out. Because if I didn't call it out in that moment, the Gentiles were watching what he was doing and he wasn't even aware of it. Watch this. Peter, who has seen Jesus, who's filled with the Holy Spirit, you mean to tell me he's still dealing with prejudice and pride? Peter, who healed people? Peter, who performed miracles? Yes, because I don't care how spiritual you are, you still got some struggle. And what God wants us to learn how to do is lay ourselves on the altar and say, God, consume every part of me that's not like you. I'm submitting yourself to your word, myself to your word, to your will, and to your way. And God, I know you're still working on me. And so sometimes that old me shows up. Sometimes that old me comes out. Sometimes the old me makes the response. God, I want to become the new version of myself. I want to think more positive. I want to see things the way you see them. I want to hear what you have to say. I want my steps to be ordered by you. So God, I want you to continue to work. Now, here's what you got to understand. When you get stiff neck and stop receiving correction, you stop growing. Let me give this to you. Y'all know something that really frustrates me as a stubborn person. Y'all ever deal with a stubborn person? Okay, parents, you got a stubborn child. See, I, I can deal with people, you know, they do wrong and, and, and whatever, and they recognize they did wrong. It's that stubbornness, I'm not going to move from my position. I'm going to bend you my way rather than recognize what I did wrong. It's just lift your hand. You know what I'm talking about? That is very frustrating. And what that does is it leaves a person stuck in stubbornness where they're not growing. Reasonable people recognize where they did something wrong. Reasonable people recognize, okay, here's what I contributed to it. Here's what could have been corrected. Here's what could have been changed. Am I talking to anybody in here today? But what happens is, and this is what leads me to the last point. Watch this. Because Paul corrects Peter and Peter doesn't get mad and in his defense and justify what he did. He received the correction and he corrects himself and changes. Paul confronts him and he corrects his behavior. I want to challenge us on the night when you're confronted with the truth, don't run from the truth. When you're confronted with a part of you, don't try to hide it. If the word is like a mirror, yeah, because y'all know people, we don't like mirrors. Or we, no, here it is. We like certain mirrors that show us what we want to see. The Bible says that the word of God is like a mirror. How many of y'all got mirrors in your house and there's certain mirrors you like uh, over other mirrors? I got one mirror. I don't go to it all because I know it ain't going to show me my angles right. I got another mirror. I go straight to that mirror. I want it to, sh I want it to show me the way I want to see myself. 
But sometime I need the mirror that shows me what I don't want to see. Because that mirror shows me I still got some work to do. I still got some stuff to change. I still got some stuff to correct. See, God says, I'm going to confront you gently with some stuff in your life. And I want you to respond by adjusting and changing that stuff that I revealed to you. And here it is, Peter, as spiritual as he was, still struggling with pride. And prejudice. I want you to fill this in for yourself. What might you be struggling with? What is it that God keeps bringing up? Here it is. What is it that keeps getting a certain response out of you that's showing you that's a trigger for me? I had some stuff happen recently in my life that triggered some stuff in me and I couldn't change the circumstances and I recognized God used that instance to show me some deeper rooted issues. And I said, God, I thank you because through that thing, you revealed things about me I was unaware of. I was functioning, but I wasn't functioning correctively, the correct way until you showed that to me and now I know how to pray because it's not just the stuff on the surface. It's the stuff at the root. And I recognize the reason that bothers me is because of my pride. I recognize the reason that bothers me is because I still have some issues with trust. I still have some issues with insecurities and it would not have been revealed. So God, I thank you because I now know how to pray. Thank God for the stuff in your life that shows you you. And here's what I want us to learn how to do. I want us to learn how to say, like Peter, I didn't even know it was there. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Here's what Paul said. Paul said, I'm not doing away with the law in the book of Galatians. He says, the law revealed to me covetousness. Paul said, I ain't know I had covetous. It was the law that revealed it to me. Thank God for the stuff he reveals in our life to make us better. I was at a conference. I'm going to close it with this. I was at a conference, and um, while there, I was speaking to somebody for an hour. I was speaking to somebody for an hour, and uh, we were talking, and a room full of people, and we were talking and all that. And I left, and I went to go get a coffee, and a brother was talking to me. He said, yeah, man, wipe your mouth right there. He said, you got something right there on your mouth. And I said to myself, I've been all up in these folk face for a whole hour talking with stuff. Can't you, I can't stand when people got white stuff in their mouth. Y'all imagine it now. Y'all can't even look at me the same because I said it. That's why I'm always doing this number. I'm grateful he confronted me and told me what I couldn't see. God, don't let me run around here with boogers in my nose, stuff hanging out my eyes and my mouth. God, correct me. I'm thinking I'm okay and my attitude raggedy and I'm messing up friendships and relationships and opportunities. Work on me, Lord. What can happen is we run around here, stuff all on us. They got a saying, the emperor has no clothes. Y'all ever heard that? And the only one who knows it is, the only one who don't know it is the emperor. And everybody else can see it, but he doesn't recognize you have no clothes. God wants to work on us, but here's what I want to give y'all. And I'm going to close with this. I want to give this to us. Just like Peter, I need you to hear this. Here's somebody who knew God intimately. Still struggling with stuff. I'm closing with this because I want you to get this grace. God says, I prefer honesty over hypocrisy. I know you're not going to be perfect. I just want you to be honest. I know you're not perfect. I already knew that when I chose you. I just want you to agree with me that you got work to do, right? Yeah, I do. I got work. Okay, now let's work on you together. 
And I want us to get this on today. I want us every single day, stand on your feet. I don't intend to be long tonight. I want you to get this. Just like the apostle Peter. I want us, when God shows us the, ooh, my God, thank you, Holy Spirit. Peter received what Paul had to say. Can we receive what our friends or family or people close to us or pastor tells us about us? Can we receive it and say, you know what, you're right. I want us to pray that we don't become defensive over stuff God is trying to correct in our life. Because we got two eyes to look outward, but we don't have the ability to look inward. And God puts people around us to show us ourselves. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, even now, I thank you for your word. I thank you, God, how you help us to recover, how you restore us, how you work on our hearts and our minds. I thank you, God, that you show us things about ourselves in your word. You reveal our weaknesses. You reveal things we didn't even see. God, I pray for every person under the sound of my voice right now. You said in your word, there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. God is imperfect as we are, as flawed as we are. All the issues we have, let us not be weighed down by those things, but let us rejoice in the fact that you still love us. You still have grace for us. And God, I pray and ask that the things we cannot see You will begin to show us those things and we will begin to work on those things. Don't let us stay in the same state that we were in in the last season. Help us to go from faith to faith and glory to glory. Help us to see growth, to embrace growth, to embrace maturity, to embrace change. Change things about our mind, our heart our spirits, our souls, our pattern, our behavior, our thinking, what we dwell on, patterns, things that need to be broken in our lives. God, and we don't want to make excuses. We don't want to justify what we do or what we think, and you want to change it. So God, change it in our hearts and minds. And I pray for those who are struggling right now, who are discouraged, who say, yes, I recognize I got this issue. I got this hang up, but I just can't seem to overcome it. God, you said in your word that you give us both the will and the ability to do of your own good pleasure. So God, help us now that we're aware, begin to do the things we know we need to do. Change us and transform us. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise. How many of y'all feel like you're growing? Come on, I feel like I'm growing. I feel like I'm maturing. I'm getting better. I'm excited about it. Listen, I'm excited about this uh, Sunday. This Sunday, I'm sharing a message. It's you Sunday, by the way, called Go Look Again. I want to I encourage those who, uh, who maybe uh, God put something in your heart and you haven't seen it come to fruition yet. Uh, You know it's come from God. I want you to go and look again and trust God again. Listen, also, I'm excited about our young adult ministry, our young adult ministry. Come on, give it up for them. Ages 18 to 30, and we have some other members in there who are a part of that young adult uh, steering committee. But listen, I'm excited because God is doing something with this generation, and we want to provide space and room for it. And so at two o'clock on Sunday, starting April the 28th, right upstairs, our young adults will gather to be informal. Uh, We'll have food for you. It'll be Bible study in your own way, your own time. It lasts for about an hour. I want you building those relationships because I know, come on, give God some glory for what's coming out of that. I'm excited about all of our life groups, our men's ministry, our women's ministry, our young adult ministry, our teens ministry our season saints ministry come on give it up for our season saints we are a multi-generational church every generation is touch our children's church touch and agree with somebody i'm gonna let y'all leave early tonight let y'all leave early y'all owe me 15 minutes next week then dominique let y'all, i'm the professor tonight i'm the professor let's pray god i thank you for each and every person in this place 
God, I thank you for the relationships that we have with one another and the relationship we have with you. God, cover these, your people, God. I pray that these people are blessed. I pray that they are prosperous. I pray that they are healthy. I pray that their minds are strong. Their emotions are not wavering. Their spirits are thriving. I pray, Lord God, that every bill is paid. I pray and ask that debt is deleted. I pray and ask, Lord God, for victory in every area of their life. I pray and ask that whatever they go after that you put in their heart, God, that they will see the fruition of it. I pray and ask you bless us even as we get ready to leave this place, but never your presence. Protect us and guard us. We pray for this entire 38th Street corridor, our neighbors in between Arlington and Emerson. God, we pray from 38th Street all the way to 46th Street, all the way to 21st Street. God, that you would bless the households. Even beyond the city of Indianapolis, God, you've assigned us to this city. You've given us a strategic position and unique favor to be able to share the light of Christ. Bless us to do it. Use us even now. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise. Go forth and be blessed in Jesus' name. God bless you.